Athletic Group I, England, moving five points clear there with those three goals in 15 minutes in that 4-0 win. Four goals all together in the end of this one. But Nader Manua, you were watching this one closely for us. What did you think of England's performance? To be honest, I thought England looked good. I think going over there, you, you had a feel that maybe it would be a lot tougher than, than it probably ended up because you've seen that home support. We saw it in the Euros, but I think overall they controlled possession well. They never really let Hungary get too much on the front foot and give the crowd something to um, chant positively about. So credit to them, it looked like a very professional performance. And, you know, if this is the England side going forward, I think, I think they look good. Yeah, obviously, uh, definitely looking good, 4-0. You've got to be happy with that one. Gab, do you have anything to say about England under Gareth Southgate? Obviously, this was their first game back after that loss in the final of Euro 2020 to Italy. I, I don't think Southgate could have hoped for a better reaction. You know, if, if there were going to be, uh, you know, cobwebs or, or, or residue from, uh, uh, from what happened on July 11th at Wembley, uh, while well, the players showed that they're professional, they moved on from it. And you could look at this and say Hungary weren't particularly good and that, you know, England, it's, it's two goals in transition and two goalkeeping errors. Um, but ultimately, this is the way Southgate wants to play. And when he plays that way, it's the right kind of opponent and um, they attack well on the counter. Uh, England will win and on nights like this, they'll, they'll win big. A big win, and so the win was the good news. The bad news was racist chanting in the stands, and it shouldn't come as a surprise. Hungary already under a three-game stadium ban from UEFA for racist and homophobic chanting. But under FIFA ruling, and with these being FIFA World Cup qualifying, that doesn't apply, but FIFA can be expecting to hear complaints now because this is exactly what happened. We saw the cups thrown as well, Ale, after Raheem Sterling's goal, and it's just not good enough, especially when we know that this has happened before and their fans are allowed in under a different ruling. That whole thing is just shady. <laughs> the fact that they can get into the stadium on a different ruling, that, that to me in itself is, is obviously incorrect and should not happen and it's unacceptable. Uh, the fact that we're having this conversation still in the year 2021, it, it's incredible to me. And yet, in so many ways, because we keep seeing happening, then w w we sort of get used to these things and, and go, are we ever going to get better? Is it ever going to get better? Are, are, the, are the punishments enough? And, and are the organizations involved punishing these this countries and, and these teams the way that they should? Because obviously, the message is not getting through. So how far can you go? Well, you go as far as you need to go in order to make a point. And at, to this, at, at this point, this is so incredible that we're still having these conversations. And whatever reactions we have, apparently that's not enough. So you got to push it as far as you possibly can if you are a governing body and punish these teams accordingly. Uh, Nadem, surely UEFA and FIFA have to be working together at times like this when there has been a ban for fans and then you can have all those fans back in and guess what? It happens again. You would think so, wouldn't you? But this kind of sums up the whole situation within football. You know, in our world, no, you can't do this. You know, we're going to ban you. But then, you know, next week you can go and have fans in there. And it's, it's stupid. Like when I was watching the game myself, I was thinking something's probably going to happen. And lo and behold, something happened. But then even if you want to talk about the governing bodies and the punishments that they've given out, I think when you look at the source, because let's be clear, it's not everybody in the stadium that's doing that. But I think there were quite high up um, Hungarian officials who were critical of UEFA for the punishments which they were given based on what happened in the summer. So when you hear that that's how they feel about it, then they're going to find every way possible to put fans in a stadium because they don't think they're doing anything wrong. And I think for me, you know, we can criticise governing bodies, but that is the bigger issue in my opinion. And I don't know how that's going to change if they're 100% adamant that this type of behaviour is perfectly acceptable. And it's problematic, Gab. Even before the game, Gareth Southgate was asked what would happen if there were problems there. And he said, you know, we've had problems ourselves back in England. Look what happened in the final. And now this has happened, though. You know that England are going to go and have to complain about this. Yeah, no. And, and I think they're different things, right? I mean, uh, you could argue that it, it, it's obviously all part of the same problem, that people... Uh, feel that they can get away with things uh, with impunity, whether it's racially abusing somebody on, on social media, um, booing the anthem, or, or, or racially abusing somebody in person as, and, and, and throwing objects uh, as happened at the Pushkas Arena. 
Um, we can all say that, you know, they're all symptoms of the same sickness, but there's different cures, and there are real cures um, that can be done. Uh, this justification that, well, it's a different competition, and so the same way that, you know, if you get a stadium ban in the Premier League, um, it doesn't apply in the Champions League, that only carries so much water. You know, it's, it's international football, and I think, and, you know, you're absolutely right, the fact that they were punished uh, by UEFA, the fact that they had this acrimonious thing uh, in the summer, uh, it just led a bunch of people saying, to, into saying, well, uh, you know, oh, look, England are coming. If we're going to go down, let's go down swinging. Let's get, a, let's get a ban here, too, by a different organization. Let's have one last hurrah. And uh, unfortunately, this is how, this is how a, a, min a minority of these fans think. Um, and, then, you know, they think that uh, they're making a statement against the governing bodies uh, by acting this way. And I think it just made it worse. And as Nadim said, you could, you could easily see this coming. And what's disappointing to me is that the local authorities in Budapest and the build-up to the game, I think they could have done a much, much better job mitigating it and, and, and paying attention to what was going on. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.